This video is sponsored by NordPass. Create and store your passwords easily and securely with the cybersecurity experts from NordVPN. More on them in a bit. Say the date June the 4th, and most people's minds will jump to Tiananmen Square. The protests that occupied this central area in Beijing, the government suppression, and the violence surrounding the entire event is a pivotal moment in modern Chinese history that had ripple effects around the world. But Tiananmen Square was not the only noteworthy event to happen in a communist country on that day. Outside the city of Ufa, over 4,500 kilometers away from Beijing, an explosion whose strength was just shy of the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima rocked the Soviet countryside. The disaster claimed the lives of hundreds of people, exposed the faults in a deteriorating Soviet infrastructure, and was described as a real hell by none other than Mikhail Gorbachev, the man in charge of the whole Soviet show. Though some Soviet news outlets and even the New York Times covered this event, select few people seem to remember this piece of history, many Russian historians among them. This could be partly because of Tiananmen Square distracting history's attention, and partly because of the censorship of news in the USSR. But an event as tragic as this should not disappear into history. It deserves to have its story told so that the mistakes that led to it can be learned from, lives lost can be commemorated, and this event can have its rightful place in history. Just as the story of Tiananmen Square needs to be told, so too should history remember the Ufa train disaster. The 1980s saw the height and the beginning of the thaw of the Cold War. It witnessed the administration of Ronald Reagan flax American muscle more assertively abroad to many highly disputable outcomes and to a rise in materialism, consumerism, and the yuppie culture in the US. American Psycho and Wall Street, both set in the 1980s, make this a decade defined by movies about a business card obsessed stylish young professional slash serial killer and a wealth obsessed corporate villain who declares greed is good. In the Soviet Union, though, the 1980s saw a tumultuous time of military build-up and quagmire in Afghanistan, economic stagnation, and political reforms, over which historians and analysts have a field day arguing how each led to the fall of the USSR in the beginning of the following decade. The world's two greatest powers of the time saw drastically different trajectories in the 1980s, one leading to political dissolution and the other to the assumption of the role of sole geopolitical superpower. The Soviet 80s started off with the death of President and General Secretary of the Communist Party, Leonid Brezhnev. After a couple of years of leadership reshuffling, Mikhail Gorbachev assumed the role of General Secretary and, later in 1988, the role of President. A combination of economic woes, military stagnation abroad, continued high spending and investment in military, and an attempt at political reform aimed at increased openness that unexpectedly led to an outpouring of public criticism against the government and system, all took its toll throughout that decade. Any and all of these reasons can and have been attributed to setting the stage for the Soviet Union's later collapse. Then, on April 26, 1986, the USSR experienced a catastrophe that some historians and even Mikhail Gorbachev himself assert contributed to the country's fall, the Chernobyl disaster. The mismanagement of the disaster that produced 400 times the nuclear fallout of the Hiroshima bomb and the cover-up of information led to increased public distrust in the government. The Soviet government's novel policy of glasnost and attempt at a more open and transparent government institution seemed to crash and burn before it had even taken off. As radiation from the nuclear power plant explosion was still leaking and spreading around the Soviet countryside, government officials, instead of disseminating information in the name of transparency, made efforts to suppress the news reports and slander foreign coverage of the event as lies and rumors. Some officials even ordered that May Day parades in affected areas still continue as planned, with the risk of radiation exposure being fully known. Gorbachev didn't issue an official statement on the event until May the 14th, 18 days after the explosion and 10 days after it was finally contained. As the 1980s continued, they held no shortage of disaster for the Soviet Union. The same year as the Chernobyl incident, a Soviet cruise ship and cargo ship collided in the Black Sea, claiming the lives of nearly 400 people. A couple of years later, an earthquake in northern Armenia, then a part of the Soviet Union, took the lives of around 25,000 people and destroyed several cities and villages. On top of all this, according to the New York Times, ethnic clashes in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and now Uzbekistan have also contributed to a sense that the country is deteriorating faster than Mr. Gorbachev can fix it. 
Meanwhile, in China, the government was dealing with its own public unrest. Protesters, mostly students, had gathered en masse in Tiananmen Square. The demonstrations were instigated by the death of Hu Yaobang, the former general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, who had encouraged the development of democratic and liberal reforms. The protesters started gathering in Tiananmen Square the day of Hu's funeral, April the 22nd, and continued to occupy the square, calling for political and economic reform the whole spring until the night of June the 3rd to June the 4th. June the 3rd. 1989. As night shrouded Beijing, the government ordered tanks and soldiers of the People's Liberation Army to enter the square and clear it of the protesters. As June the 3rd turned to the 4th, the reports coming from Beijing captivated seemingly the entire attention of governments, press outlets, and people around the world. The world's attention was distracted so much that few people were aware of the similar protests and crackdowns that occurred around China that same day. The most notable of these in Chengdu and Shanghai, though the latter ended in peaceful negotiation, let alone the happenings on the other side of the Asian continent. It was against this backdrop, apparent Soviet decline, unrest in the world's two major communist countries, and all eyes on China, that the Soviet Union experienced the Yufa train disaster, an event forgotten by many, but which had a tremendous impact on hundreds of families and the leader of the Soviet Union himself. Now we'll get back to today's video in just a second, but first is a quick word from today's fantastic video sponsor, NordPass. NordPass is a next generation password manager where cybersecurity meets modern convenience. How many times do you struggle to remember those passwords that you only use two or three times a year? Suddenly you're trying to reset a password and, well, you can't remember the name of your first grade teacher. Before you know it, half of your afternoon is gone with reset emails and authentication requests and, no one likes that. NordPass is the perfect solution to your password management problems. It stores all of your login or credit card information in a super secure password vault, letting you autofill any login with just one click. But NordPass isn't just a one-trick pony. Its password health feature analyzes your passwords, letting you know if they're too old, too weak, or being used across too many websites. If they are, you can use its password generation tool to create and store new and more secure passwords. As if that's not enough, it's also got Data Breach Scanner, a great tool that lets you know if your login or credit card information has been leaked somewhere online. And of course, this is all designed and managed by the same experts who run NordVPN, so you know that they've got that proven track record of internet security. Right now, you guys can get 70% off a two-year NordPass subscription at nordpass.com forward slash sideprojects, or use the code sideprojects at checkout. Plus, you get an additional month for free. Wonderful. And now back to today's video. In the early morning of June the 4th, or possibly the late night of June the 3rd, a faulty gas pipeline began leaking natural gas just east of the city of Ufa. Some reports claim engineers registered a drop in pressure of that pipeline but returned the levels to normal without first checking for leaks. Weather conditions placed the ensuing gas cloud right by some train tracks a kilometer away. As the cloud of natural gas was forming, two passenger trains traveling between the city of Novosibirsk and the Black Sea resort town of Adela made their way along the tracks towards the destinations. Many of the 1,200 passengers on board these two trains were children on their way from pioneer camps along the seaside. As the two trains passed each other, they did what many trains do as their metal wheels barreled along the metal tracks. They produced sparks. What happens when those sparks met the forming gas cloud was what any chemist can tell you is a perfectly normal reaction. Ignition. The ensuing explosion is said to be the equivalent of that of 10,000 tons of TNT. The nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima was equivalent to 15,000 tons. It reduced seven carriages to ash while engulfing the remaining 37 carriages and two locomotives in flames, completely destroying them. Initial counts put the death toll at between 500 and 650 of the 1,200 passengers. The official death count today stands at 575, though a memorial at the site of the explosion lists 675 names, while other sources his claim as many as 780 people perished. The exact figures are difficult to attain because much like the Chinese government's reaction to the contemporary Tiananmen Square incident, the Soviet government was hesitant to release much information about the disaster. According to Yevgeny Brzezinski, a retired general of the Soviet army, the Soviet government heavily censored the media. In an interview with the BBC, he stated, quote, In general, the Soviet media was more concentrated on positive news and very briefly informed the public about negative news. According to the BBC, quote, 
no fewer than three historians of the Soviet Union told the BBC they have little or no recollection of the Ufa train disaster. Shortly after the explosion, military detachments and medical teams were sent to the site for search and rescue efforts. They combed the woods in search of survivors who might have escaped the blaze. But mostly, they spent their time searching through the charred remains of the train, transporting badly burned and wounded passengers to nearby cities for medical care and carrying away the charred remains of the unfortunate souls who did not escape the blast and the blaze. Soviet President and General Secretary of the Communist Party, Mikhail Gorbachev, along with the Prime Health and Defense Ministers and a retinue of other officials, visited the site of the disaster the day after. Sources quote Gorbachev as saying, It was a real hell there. He went on to say, I have this to say. I believe we are being persecuted by these events. First one, then another. Many of them are caused by mismanagement, irresponsibility, disorganization. And perhaps that is the big lesson to be taken away from this piece of history. The dire consequences that can come from simple negligence. Or perhaps the consequences of a government spending money on military and defense that they could better use on other public services. Or perhaps it is the importance of government transparency in the face of disaster. We can apply many of these lessons to modern day events. But whatever the lesson learned from this story, the Ufa train disaster deserves its place in history and its proper telling to ensure lessons are learned. Though events in China overshadowed it, the Ufa train disaster holds importance of its own, and though no memorial or telling of the events will undo the damage and loss it caused, this story can bring awareness to us today. It can help us make efforts to avoid the same mistakes and a repeat of similar disasters in the future.